You can. over Belgium and Germany. Hovering low above towns and villages, it was reported by civilians, teams of police, and military personnel. Then, on March 30, 1990, two NATO radar stations at Semerzaki and Glans simultaneously recorded an unidentified flying object passing south of Brussels. The Belgian Air Force scrambled two F-16s for an intercept. radars locked onto the object, the diamond shape, which suddenly dropped 4,000 feet in one second. As it dropped below approximately 600 feet, it vanished from all radar screens. The Air Force had no explanations. A scientist suggested the pilots were chasing a rare atmospheric phenomenon, but the chase lasted 75 minutes. The object was seen on five radar screens, and the testimony of hundreds of eyewitnesses remains. of what they might be, what they could mean. Since the beginnings of history, UFO experiences have ranged from the sublime to the manifestly absurd. If reports are to be believed, we are already the objects of much curiosity, and every year many hundreds of people claim to have had a UFO experience. <laughs> I mean, that could not be a weather balloon. That's impossible. Well, it's going up and then going over, reappearing, and it's sort of going in a sort of circle, isn't it? I'll tell you what, please, I've got it on bloody film. One community that experienced the full force of a UFO flap was Gulf Breeze in northern Florida. Over those dunes right there. Over the dunes. Oh my gosh. There she is. There she is, right there. Oh my god. Okay. Kind of way out. There's that boat just went by. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus, wouldn't you know it? Property developer Ed Walters videotaped that in November 1993, but it was only the most recent of a whole sequence of events that took the community by storm. In 1987, he photographed these extraordinarily detailed UFOs with a simple Polaroid camera. The original Polaroids were extremely dark. This one was allegedly taken as a UFO hovered above a road, and then photoanalysts light blasted them which revealed more detail in the emulsion layers. For many, the photos proved that UFOs were here to stay. Others remained unconvinced, but the events put Gulf Breeze firmly on the media map. There are so many hundreds of other witnesses locally and thousands and thousands of other witnesses worldwide that uh, maybe haven't been exposed to the media like I have because maybe they haven't written a book or they haven't for whatever reason. So I don't think that it's a um, uh, Ed Walters story. Uh, I think that the UFO story stands on its own with thousands of other people standing up and saying, I know what I saw. With a naval base at the seaward end, the vast expanse of water and sky was ideal for UFO enthusiasts beating a path to Gulf Breeze and nearby Pensacola. 
What is that baby doing? I don't know. It may look like it's moving around. It doesn't. I see two of them moving to the west slowly. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on up there? There's two of them. Who is that? Look, look, look. Look, 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 look. Right again. There it goes. Right again. Bruce and Ann Morrison now have five hours of video of the strange lights maneuvering above the bay. Look how it moves, Bruce. It's just... Oh, yeah. Well, I was having lunch with a friend at work one day, and she had heard about the Gulf Breeze sightings, but they had not hit the papers in Pensacola. You know, Gulf Breeze is a little smaller communi community outside of Pensacola. And she's started telling me about this man in Gulf Breeze who had taken all these beautiful pictures and there had been articles about it in the Sentinel. And I remember my reaction was so strange because all of a sudden I looked at my arms and I had chill bumps all over me. It was just like, it was an overwhelming feeling of wonder, amazement, and extreme interest. Three minutes, 29 seconds. Oh, it's white. Right. Turn them white there. There's three of them. Yeah. Let's go what? Whoa, go, baby, go, Bubba. Come on over here and show us some more, Bubba. I can tell you right now, I, I have been out with people that would go bananas when they saw an airplane. In fact, there's a man that uh, comes out occasionally with our group that every airplane that flies over to him is a UFO, and he will get mad and irate if you look at him and say, that's an airplane. I mean, it can be a 727, 5,000 feet over your head, coming into the landing pattern at the Pensacola Airport. This guy will look up at it and say, that's a UFO. And that's his right. But I know what I saw. I know what's on my phone. And if you want to believe it, Fine. If you don't want to believe it, that's fine also. Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, it's got a green, got a green halo around it, doesn't it? Did y'all see green around it? Yeah. All right. Not surprisingly, Ed's photograph seemed too good to be true, and he soon found himself attacked by the debunkers. Well, it's really kind of shocking. I'm an average fella. I build houses. I'm a, I'm a working man, and for some. To see something so extraordinary and tell about it, and then to be blasted, it's shocking. Uh, you just don't expect that kind of reaction. You expect people to say, oh my gosh, rather than, oh, you're crazy. Over the dunes. Oh my gosh. There she is. There she is, right there. Oh my God. I would like for somebody in the um, military industrial complex for the world governments. I would like for somebody to come forward and say, don't worry, here's what it is, this is the answer, sleep well. But they don't do that. I think they don't know. I think that they're struggling just like we're struggling. I think that when there is a, 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 a flap, a UFO um, flap, then I think that the military and the governments of the world are paying attention behind the, behind the scenes. The love-hate relationship between governments and UFOs began when the United States Air Force's Project Blue Book was set up to investigate cases like these during the 1950s and 60s. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory claims that this is a light aircraft, but Lee Hansen, the photographer, is adamant that this is nothing of the sort. As James Waters drove through Monument Valley, a bright object sped past, followed by another a second later. Slowed down, the object seemed to contract and expand. Official explanation? A meteorite. But two? One after another? UFO will return on TLC. This program is brought to you in part by Office Max, taking your business to the max.
Re-engineering results in a paradigm shift in the corporate matrix. What? Thus facilitating Experiencing system overload. We're gonna crash. Better click on Office Max. The office product superstore, electronics, computers, software, with great brand names like Soft Source or Memorex. At guaranteed low prices, that will re-engineer your budget. You can even shop online, get the latest business technology without even shifting your paradigm. Whatever that means. Office Max, we go to the max for you. Oh, Honey, boy. I told you you'd love it. You were right, here. sweetie. I went to the motel. <laughs> I feel like an outdoorsman. Yeah. <laughs> well, good, good night, honey. Oh, my God. Did you hear that? What is that? What is that? What do you see? What do you see? Oh, boy. Honey? Uh, where's the Ericsson cellular phone? Oh, shoot. I left it outside. What do you mean you left it outside? I, I got to go out there and get Ericsson it. Ericsson cellular phones. Because when life gets a little wild, you want a highly reliable Ericsson cellular phone. Hi. Hi, uh, yeah. We're in a tent. We have some trees, and there's a huge bear out there. Actually, Abercrombie and Kent isn't in the business of travel at all. We're really in the business of satisfying people's dreams. You go to university, you grow as a person. I believe travel is every bit as important as university. I think the American Express card gives one the confidence and the security to go to the farthest corners of the globe. And everybody knows the card, so it's just part of the culture. Imagine discovering a fortune in emeralds. This makes finding a needle in a haystack uh, simple by comparison. Or mining a lost vein of gold. I'm really anxious to see now where we're going to go and what we're going to find. Or striking it rich in your own home. $571,000 in cash. Join Antonio Sabato on the trail of wealth beyond your wildest dreams. My hands are twitching right now. <laughs> a search for amazing treasure tonight at 9 on TLC. Are you doing scores of sit-ups without slimming an inch? Is that tubby stomach jamming your jeans? Introducing PowerTech, the one-piece abdominal exerciser that gives you a firmer, tighter stomach in under five minutes a day. Just place the specially designed pressure pad against your stomach and squeeze. It's that simple. PowerTech isolates and increases resistance to the upper and lower abs while it targets the love handles that nobody loves. PowerTech is also adjustable. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, you'll get the ideal workout for your abs. So easy and effective you won't want to stop. You'll be amazed how easy it is to go from flabby to fabulous. Other abdominal exercise products sell for three payments of $19.95. That's nearly a whopping $60. But with PowerTech, it's one and only one payment of $29.95. Discover the fast way to a firmer stomach. Pick up the phone and order now. Sorry, no CODs. So to order PowerTech, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-776-2700 or send check or money order for $29.95 plus shipping to the address on your screen. UFO returns on TLC. In the skies above Britain, a UFO appears from nowhere and flies alongside the Concorde. It seemed intelligently controlled, but cameras can lie. The flights were filmed with a specially designed periscope camera system, Astrovision, which uses a complex arrangement of lenses and prisms we asked Alan Tanner of the original British Airways film team to take a closer look. Now this is probably the classic UFO shot that everybody refers to when they talk about a UFOs and Concorde. Again, you will find that it looks very similar to other shots that we've got uh, with funny little marks on it that people say, was this a UFO or wasn't it? Look at it closely and you'll find that there's that little spot of light coming there which could be quite easily mistaken for a UFO but in fact it's quite possible that the Sun which was off to the left hand side had caught the front element of the Astrovision periscope system and would have caused an internal reflection and I feel that that is really sums it all up you will see that as the camera moves so that little spot moves and I don't think that's a UFO fishermen filmed a diamond-shaped UFO. Checks were run on aircraft and weather balloons, but the skies were completely clear. Three months earlier, beside the Black Sea, a tourist videotaped this. It seemed an extraordinary coincidence. 
until we met Simon Nash of Panasonic. This is a, a basic iris motor. The principle of the iris motor is to regulate the amount of light entering the camera. The iris motor will open on very dull scenes and poorly illuminated scenes and close down on very high intensity or brightly lit scenes. We actually have no idea what this sort of object is here in the sky. It could be reflection from a plane or, or some other light source. But as the camera starts to zoom in, you can clearly see here the shape of the actual iris elements within the lens section of the camera. It appears to be caused by a reflection of light entering the front of the camera and bouncing around between the lens elements. And of course sandwiched between the lens elements is of course the iris motor. And the iris motor takes on this characteristic shape that it is often seen when you're looking directly or, or indirectly in towards the sun. But the image at the beginning of the tape is quite unusual and is something that can't be explained by normal camera technology, if you like. Over the past 30 years, some 8,000 UFO sightings have been reported to a special department at the British Ministry of Defense. About 5% or 400 of these remain unidentified. Nick Pope is from the ministry. The thing to stress is that 95%, I would say, of the reports that we get can be very easily explained. There is probably a hard core of about 5% which appear to defy explanation and of course we keep an open mind on them. But having said that, it doesn't mean that because something appears to defy explanation that in fact it, it couldn't be explained the very next day. Recently we've had an airship operating over the UK and that's been brightly illuminated from the inside. Now when you see it from close up, it's very obviously an airship. When you see it from a long distance away, it just looks like a very bright cigar-shaped object. And of course that has generated an awful lot of UFO reports. reports continue to defy rational explanation. In a valley near Ottawa, Canada, the object on the right was apparently witnessed by more than a dozen people. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police said it was in fact a Sikorsky helicopter, but the Canadian Defense Department said there were no helicopters in the area. This curious object filmed above an English cornfield remains a mystery. The tractor driver in the distance said that he saw a small silver disc fly silently over him. As a TV cameraman was setting up for a weather picture in Wisconsin, an object flashed past the windmill. It's traveling at over a thousand miles an hour. He checked with the local air base and with the NORAD defense network, but they had nothing to report. while filming a farming program, a TV crew suddenly noticed this object over the fields. Well, first of all, we saw what appeared to be a very large vapor trail, much thicker than the normal vapor trails. And um, when this vapor trail finished, it stopped at a straight line, you know, as opposed to fading out. Um, the object, which was obviously circular and an orange-yellow color, seemed to stop very slowly and then very quickly out of frame and it went so quickly just couldn't follow it. it seemed to be an amazing speed it really was well first of all it was the vapor trail which seemed to be suddenly appear um, the line in the sky before the vapor trail actually appeared was also visible so it looked as though it must have passed overhead without us noticing it at all but then the vapor trail itself was um, may I say sort of curly as, as though the object that was leaving it was in fact spinning then looking at the object itself you could see with the naked eye that it was in fact spinning and orange and round over 35
500 UFO reports worldwide have come from civilian and military pilots. People like Colonel Fletcher Prouty, who commanded an air squadron based in Tokyo in the 1950s. He was one of the five founders of the massive NORAD Defense Network. My aircraft were in the sky over half the world, regularly, all the time. And one day I got a top secret uh, memorandum delivered from the White House, from the uh, headquarters of the Air Force. And it ordered me, and it ordered me to tell my crews that if ever they saw an object that was unidentified, they were to report it to me. I was to set them down and take their depositions, sworn statements, and then mail them to a certain office in the Pentagon. And one day, one of my crews on a flight from Honolulu to Tokyo saw something that they had to report. And they walked in my office that morning, and the, uh, the captain of the crew was an old acquaintance of mine. He said, Colonel, I'm uh, really a little embarrassed today. He said, because we're going to get involved in a lot of paperwork. He said, we saw an unidentified object flying beside our aircraft for over an hour last night between Midway and Tokyo. We had 60 passengers aboard. There's no way we can say that it wasn't seen and it wasn't there. So I had 12 men in the crew. I had to set aside 12 rooms with 12 interrogators. We had them write their stories down what they saw. I packaged that all up and sent it to the headquarters Air Force. Never heard another word from it. In the United States, secrecy remains the order of the day, in part a legacy of the Cold War and new weapons development. But in Russia, things seem to be changing. We were given unique access to leading military figures in the former Soviet Union, who not only came forward with their own testimony, but discussed research projects linked to UFO incidents. Now, hundreds are reported every month to UFO groups and the military authorities. As a Russian film crew was shooting a music video, watching crowds saw this object appear over the center of Tbilisi. In Moscow, a KGB officer and his family filmed a group of unidentified lights. Until very recently, people did not dare report UFOs, let alone release pictures like these. UFO will return on TLC. From the front lines of the urban jungle, the real stories of the men and women who fight to save lives. Gunshot wounds to the head, people who drive into bridges, routine stuff. Witness the pulse-pounding action. It's like the Wild West. Spend a night in a real emergency room. Trauma, life and death in the ER. Wednesday at 10 on TLC. Viewer discretion is advised. What is neat stuff? I'm glad you asked me that. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. One old sign, that's just junk. But you get a lot of old signs, and you've got yourself some neat stuff. Don't listen to that guy. The amazing stuff happens at 10.30. Uh oh How giant is the people? Something about like this? <laughs> what more could you ask for? Neat stuff. Amazing America. Thursday nights at 10, here on TLC. Ever come face to face with a woolly mammoth? You can at the Smithsonian Institution, where they've got everything from Dorothy's shoes to moon rocks. Intel is a partner in the Smithsonian's 150th anniversary because we think learning and discovery are important. After all, we invented the microprocessor, which lets you come face to face with a whole world of things on your PC. Intel, the computer inside. Another day begins in Europe. Just as it has for centuries. And as each new day arrives, so does a silver bird from the West. This morning, American Airlines will touch down in 11 European 
cities in nine different countries, just as the new day begins. So whether it's business or pleasure that brings you to Europe, fly the airline that can have you there as early as tomorrow morning. American Airlines, something special to Europe. UFO returns on TLC. For years, the old secret regimes prevented anyone from admitting to any UFO experience. Now, for the first time, Major General Boris Surikov was able to tell us about an unidentified flying object encountered during the Second World War. As it approached, it electrically charged their bomber, threatening a massive fuel explosion. To save the plane, they jettisoned their bomb load, but reported their mission a complete success for fear of reprisals. One incident which revolutionized Russian military thinking about UFOs happened on September 20th, 1977, at Petrozavodsk on the Russian-Finnish border. At about four in the morning, over 170 witnesses, including 20 border guards and police, saw a large glowing object raining down beams of light. It hovered over the town for some 15 minutes before moving off towards the Finnish border. But it had been seen over a wide area for at least four hours before that. Colonel Boris Sokolov headed the Ministry of Defense's investigation team. Later, having read the report, I found that a large group of military men had witnessed the event about several hundred kilometers away from Petrozavodsk, in one of the border regions. When they tried to report it using their usual field communications, they had telephone and cable lines, radio and shortwave, none of them worked. After the incident, which had lasted for several hours over Petrozavodsk, and a little shorter period of time over the border area, all communications were suddenly restored. This event so concerned the military that for the first time they and the scientists began a unique state-funded research project. The Russian Academy of Sciences and the Ministry of Defense in Moscow were able to draw on a potential observer force of some six million troops. It was a huge number, an experiment that will never be repeated. It lasted 10 years, and the whole of the Soviet Union was involved, one-sixth of the globe. And the number of potential observers was over 10 million. Up until now, this incident has always been dismissed as disinformation, a cover story for a secret rocket launching. Now, for the first time, Colonel Sokolov has testified to the actual events that led to one of the world's most extensive UFO research projects. If UFOs are tangible objects, they seem to demonstrate an extraordinary technology. In Moscow, there is a state-funded organization that is actively investigating new propulsion systems based on UFO reports. Dr. Anatoly Akimov is the director. We are not looking to limit our research objectives by just trying to explain abnormal physical experiments. What we are trying to do is to go beyond the normal investigative boundaries. If we believe, and we certainly have good reason to do so, that the UFOs exist as a real phenomenon, then naturally the question arises as to whether our contemporary science can come to some understanding of them. In stark contrast to the openness of the Russians, the British Ministry of Defense is still denying an incident that happened in 1980 here at the Woodbridge Joint British-American Air Force Base. This was one of the busiest military air bases in the United Kingdom. Its activities were highly secret and it held one of NATO's largest stockpiles of nuclear weapons. 
It was in the early hours of December 28th that two teams of base security officers left the East Gate to investigate strange lights in the forest. One team included the deputy base commander, Lieutenant Colonel Halt, and in the other group was Larry Warren, then 19 years old. I'm standing in Rendlesham Forest. We're on December 28th to 29th, 1980. Just behind me, Colonel Holt and a group of NCOs and officers had their sighting of events, which is recorded on the tape that he made that night, about a quarter mile that way. My event took place right here, heading toward this farmer's field. I had no idea what was about to happen. No one else with me really did at that time at all, except that this field in front of me was illuminated with some very bright, strange light. I noticed that this giant oak tree here was illuminated as well. That was my first indication that something wasn't right in the field. As standard procedure, Lieutenant Colonel Halt was tape recording his team's progress through the forest. As they measured radiation levels, they spotted something through the trees. The voices you hear are from the actual tape. The pictures are a reconstruction. As I was watching this mist on the ground, there was other Air Force personnel, security police, all throughout this field. Over in the distance was two uh, cameras, and one was a video camera, one was a motion picture camera. And at the time, the video cameras were very bulky technology, but I recognized it for what it was. Everything I saw in this field was documented on film that night, both on still photographs and on motion picture. There's no doubt about it. What I saw, I'll walk to the center of the area where this mist was. Uh, you can see it clearly. Ground zero would be here. After watching this object on the ground, a red ball of light moved in. I thought it was an A-10 taxiing to RAF Woodbridge behind me, about a mile came in over that far stand of trees, stopped over the circular fog-like object on the ground, dispersed in an explosion of color that was soundless, heatless, and what happened was a transformation somehow of this mist to a structured object. It was about 30 feet at the base, 20 feet in height, and a bank of blue lights at the base of it, and mother of pearl or rainbow effect all over. It was very difficult to look directly at. The worst thing to happen to me was that when the event transpired, when there was that transformation, somehow, uh, some senior people ran off into these woods, into these fields, and left us here. We, and why I didn't run could have been shock or whatever, but a number of us ran, a number of us just stayed glued. Zigzagging about. And I thought, mate, 
if there were aeroplanes, they would crash into the forest because the, the runway's over there and they're over there. A strict security clampdown, denials and other explanations quickly followed the incident. Oxford Ness Lighthouse, six miles away, was one. Others included meteorites, police cars and bright stars. The alleged films and photographs have never been released, but one piece of evidence remains. Lieutenant Colonel Halt's report, authenticated as genuine by the British Ministry of Defense. It was released three years later through pressure from Warren and others using the Freedom of Information Act. Despite government pronouncements, one man whose views cannot be ignored is Lord Peter Hill Norton, Admiral of the Fleet and Britain's former Chief of Defence Staff in the early 1970s. It seems to me that something physical took place. I have no doubt that something landed at this U.S. Air Force base, and I have no doubt that it got the people concerned, the U.S. Air Force people and the commanding general at the base, into a very considerable state. My view is that the Ministry of Defense, who were repeatedly questioned about this, not only by me, but by other people, have doggedly stuck to their normal line, which is that nothing which was of defense interest took place on that occasion. My position about this has always been quite clear, and I have said this both in public and on the television and on the radio, and I said it face to face to Lord Trefgarn when we met. Either large numbers of people, including the commanding general at Bentwaters, were hallucinating, and for an American Air Force nuclear base, this is extremely dangerous, or what they say happened did happen. And in either of those circumstances, there can only be one answer, and that is that it was of extreme defense interest to the United Kingdom. And I have never had a satisfactory rebuttal of that view. Most UFO incidents are reported by ordinary people, and more often than not, the event itself can be deeply traumatic. But more traumatic is the secrecy machine that moves into action to deny, to ridicule, or even to threaten those who have unwittingly experienced something quite out of the ordinary as a small community discovered when a UFO allegedly crashed near Roswell, New Mexico. He said, you did not see anything. There was no crash here. You don't go into town and making any rumors that you saw anything that there was any crashes. And he said, you could get in a lot of trouble. Well, I was a little agitated, a little mad about the situation when he called me an SOB to start with. And I said, hey, look, mister, I said, I'm a civilian and you can't do a damn thing to me. Oh, yes, we can, mister. He said somebody would be picking your bones out of the sand. UFO will return on TLC. A virus alert Friday beginning at 8 on TLC. Until now, you've never seen the whole story of war. Because no one's ever told the whole story before. The technology and bravery. The sacrifices and atrocities. The power and the horror of 100 years of war. The complete history of the conflicts, wars, and rebellions of the 20th century. The Century of Warfare. The definitive visual record of modern war. Exclusively from Time Life Video. Be there at every major battle in the midst of action you've never seen before. You'll see, for the first time, rare footage from behind enemy lines. You'll finally get the whole picture. The Century of Warfare is available nowhere else. It's not in any store. Call now and start with Air War. See what the pilots saw in World War II. And find out how close we came to losing the battle for Europe's skies. Now you can get the facts behind every conflict of our century. From War at Sea to Iron Curtain to Vietnam. From the beginnings on up 
to yesterday's headlines. Mad Men past and present. An unbelievable gallantry under fire. Never before has the entire history of modern conflict been brought together in one comprehensive series. The Century of Warfare from Time Life. It's 100 years of combat footage from both sides with action you've never seen before. Call now and start with Air War for only $4.99. No other documentary about war is so complete and you can't get it in any store. So call now before it's too late. To order your Century of Warfare Air War video, call 1-800-635-7776. That's 1-800-635-7776. Call now or send $4.99 plus $349 shipping to Century of Warfare, Department 4, Richmond, Virginia, 23280. Join Antonio Sabato on the trail of wealth beyond your wildest dreams. This makes finding a needle in a haystack uh, simple by comparison. My hands are twitching right now. <laughs> a search for amazing treasure tonight at 9 on TLC. So, are you with AT&T? No. Oh, how's your long-distance company working out for you? I'm not happy at all. <laughs> but what if I gave you some really good reasons to switch to AT&T, including up to 100 free AT&T minutes? That would be um, wonderful. Only AT&T customers can get AT&T True Reach Savings. I didn't know that. Yeah, spend $25 a month and you save 25% on every type of call on your AT&T phone bill. It's easy. It's free. You can call anyone, anywhere in the U.S. And you see your savings on your AT&T Phone bill. I don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. <laughs> no, but you do have to be an AT&T customer. Switch now and we'll send you AT&T long distance certificates. Good for up to 100 free AT&T minutes. You can use your free minutes to call, well, anybody. So, what are you going to do? Switch to AT&T. Good. Then why not give us a call right now? Cause... You didn't ask me what I was going to do. Okay. Who's a long distance company for you? It's hands down AT&T. That's your true choice, AT&T. UFO returns on TLC. The case of the crashed disc and its alien occupants has become an enduring UFO classic. On July 2nd, 1947, near Roswell, New Mexico, Mac Brazell discovered an extraordinary collection of metal and other debris scattered over his ranch lands. A few days later, he contacted local sheriff George Wilcox, who called the Roswell Army Air Base. They sent Major Jesse Marcel to investigate and collect as much debris as possible. The Army issued a press release saying they had recovered a crash disc. But later that day, Major General Ramey denied the report, saying the debris was simply a grounded weather balloon. For Fred Whiting of the Fund for UFO Research, the official conclusion simply didn't hold water. With other researchers, he has filmed the testimonies of some surviving witnesses and their family members. Heretofore, stories of crash saucers were twice told tales. Uh, I have a brother who has a cousin who has an uncle whose barber says he knows someone who heard something. That has been the way most of these accounts have been circulating. That's very frustrating because you can't follow up on that. You can't ascertain what the facts are. And in all likelihood, the story's bogus because it's been told by so many people and, and therefore is, is quite distorted. Roswell is different. Roswell has a cast of characters who are known, most of whom are still alive even after 46 years, all of whom are extremely credible people. One thing I was certain of, being familiar with all our activities, that it was not a weather balloon nor an aircraft, nor a missile. It was something else of which we didn't know what it was. There were just fragments strewn all over the area, an area about three quarters of a mile long and several hundred feet wide. One evening we were watching TV and it was uh, on TV there was something about space. And my grandmother looked over at me and she said, Barbara, do you believe in anything, you know, outside of the earth? And I said, you know I do. And she said, well, I have something that I would really like to tell you, but I don't want you to ever discuss this or tell anyone because I've never told anybody. She just wrote an article one time just and put flying saucer on it, and that's all she had ever written down on a piece of paper. And I said, fine, what do we, what do you need to tell me? And she, you know, I, I thought it was going to be something completely different than what she told me. And she said, uh, in the 40s, there was a space 
aircraft, a flying saucer is what Beaumont called it, uh, crashed outside of Roswell. And I said, that's interesting. I said, how do you know about it, Big Mom? And she said, your grandfather, George, was as a sheriff at the time. When the incident happened, the military police came to the courthouse, to the jailhouse, and told George and I that if we ever told anything about this incident, talked about it in any way, that not only we would be killed, but the family, that they would, cut, they would get the rest of the family. Why? What did he know? According to witnesses, the military discovered something more. At the Army Air Base, an autopsy was in progress, witnessed by a nurse, a close friend of the local mortician. She said when one of the hands was detached from the arm, and she said when they, the doctors turned it over, that she noticed on and they did, they made a notation. That's what she was doing, was trying to take notes and making notations for them. And they were all sick. But she said that on the tips of these little fingers, it looked like little pads with little, little holes that kind of looked like a small suction cup on each end of these fingers here. It said there was no thumb at all on that, and they only had like the four fingers on there. I undertook an effort to try to find out if the Pentagon was still sticking to the weather balloon story. So I generated a series of letters through my senators and my congressmen, and I also urged other researchers to do the same thing. What we got was a very clear pattern of, of denial and buck passing. The people of New Mexico were also alerting their own congressman, Stephen Schiff, who took up the case on their behalf. From the statements of witnesses that, I, that I've seen or read, a number of individuals described that whatever it was that was recovered uh, from the area around, uh, uh, actually, Corona, New Mexico, uh, near Roswell, that it, apparently it was put in a special plane that was flown in for this purpose, and that the, and, and that the materials were under armed guards because people described the MPs. And I, I think it's logical to say that weather balloons aren't normally flown by special planes under armed guard. So that by itself at least raises a legitimate question as to was this a weather balloon. I got a response from an Air Force colonel who just said, we've referred your request to the National Archives. And, you know, that, that simple, that quick. And so I contacted the Department of Defense again and received a response at a higher level. Uh, we're referring you to the National Archives. So I contacted the National Archives. And the National Archives responded to me that they didn't have any material on the Roswell incident. Now, needless to say, I considered this a runaround at the least. And uh, it was at that point that I asked our general accounting office uh, to assist me. UFO will return on TLC. Your life is controlled from above, where satellites can relay hundreds of TV channels. Discovery Channel. Track whales in the ocean. Follow elephants in Africa. Keep an eye on enemies, or keep an eye on you. See Eyes in the Sky, a world premiere special when Spy Watch begins. Tonight at 9 Eastern and Pacific, only on the Discovery Channel. Explore your world. A 166 megahertz Intel Pentium processor, six-speed CD-ROM, and full motion video make the AST Advantage 800 one hot multimedia computer. Ask anyone. There it is! Ah! I touched it! I did! I touched the box! Yeah! I did! Is this the shape of things to come? Or perhaps this? Or even this? Every month, more than two million readers see the face of the future. Here, in America's oldest continuously published magazine, Scientific American. And now you can receive a trial issue free, without obligation. In the pages of Scientific American, Industry pace setters and gifted scientists, many of them Nobel Prize winners, bring you their latest research, significant accomplishments, and remarkably innovative solutions to the problems of our planet. You'll be fascinated by what you read, 
you'll become better informed about vital trends destined to impact on your life and your business in the years ahead. Call now for your free issue of Scientific American. There's no obligation. Then if you wish, accept a money-saving one-year subscription, 12 issues in all for just $24.97, or cancel, owe nothing, and still keep your free issue. If you do subscribe, you'll receive two free gifts. This parchment replica of Scientific American's very first issue, dated 1845, plus this special collection of articles by Nobel Prize winners, including Albert Einstein. But right now, simply call for your free issue without obligation. Call 1-800-308-5800. That's 1-800-308-5800. UFO returns on TLC. The General Accounting Office at Congressman Schiff's request agreed to undertake an inquiry into whether or not there was a cover-up of information concerning uh, the Roswell events. Uh, an investigator was assigned to the case, uh, reporting back, of course, to the Congressman's office, since the General Accounting Office is a creature of the Congress. It's the Congress's investigative arm. This investigator approached uh, uh, an official within the Air Force Congressional Liaison Office, the Director of Plans and Operations, Colonel Larry Shockley. The investigator said to Colonel Shockley, I'm interested in getting into the Roswell case. Colonel Shockley's response reportedly was, you've got no business getting into that. This is not the first, and I suspect nor will it be the last, such obstruction of this investigation. They didn't say, uh, Congressman Schiff, we have documents, but they are classified. You're going to have to go through certain procedures if you want access to them. Uh, that would have at least been a reasonable response. But to send me to an agency which doesn't have the documents, and by now they must know that, uh, that is not a reasonable response. Stephen Aftergood of the Federation of American Scientists believed there could be a less secretive and more mundane explanation. The National Archives reports that it has more than 300 million pages of classified documents from before 1960 alone that are awaiting declassification review. Uh, in other words, documents dating from pre-World War I through 1960. If we extrapolate that to a likely estimate for all classified documents through the present, I would say there have to be well in excess of a billion pages of classified documents uh, that are, are waiting for, for declassification review. The secrecy system has become reflexive. We are concealing a lot of information that is not genuinely sensitive. And ironically, we are probably not protecting those genuinely sensitive secrets adequately. The Roswell incident in particular has been an enduring uh, story because there have been so many mixed signals from the government and above all because uh, there remains a quantity of government documents that have been kept secret uh, more than 45 years after the event. I think uh, a, a, a government accounting for this whole episode is long, long overdue, and um, people have every right to demand that uh, such an accounting be carried out. Now what we need to do is we need to establish in the minds of the Congress, it's already firmly established in the minds of most of the UFO researchers in the United States and elsewhere around the world, that there is indeed a cover-up of information. For what reason? We can only speculate. To what end? We haven't the faintest idea. But the fact of the matter is, is that our government is not being responsive to its citizens uh, who want simply to know the facts. I think there's a big leap uh, that is made by some people from an unexplained incident to an explanation that, that invokes uh, sentient extraterrestrial entities that are somehow uh, uh, active on Earth. Um, I am not personally cognizant of, of any evidence to, to support that, um, but certainly there is a vast quantity of government documentation on the phenomenon of unidentified flying objects of, of one sort or another. The obsession with secrecy is a legacy of the Cold War. 
as West meets East, will we join the Russians in attempting to find an answer to the mystery of the UFO phenomenon? We cannot rule out the possibility that creatures who may well be superior to us are interested in what is happening on our Earth. These unidentified flying objects that appear to display unique characteristics, such as their speed, their rapid maneuvering and so on, must be studied in the interest of mankind. I do not subscribe to the views that some ufologists hold that this is all in the mind. I believe that there is undoubtedly something or a number of things, they may be quite different things too, uh, in our atmosphere which is physical and were it to land could be seen and touched and photographed. And indeed there are people who say that all those things have already happened. I th hope that someday we find out what it's all about. But um, everybody loves a mystery. And I think someday we'll know. It's getting up brighter, isn't it? And then it's dinner. changing shapes. It keeps like flashing out. Yeah, I, I noticed that. It's all sort of really bright, isn't it? And then Pelt. it's gone behind a oh, cloud. Oh, no, it's something's flashing on the video, like the tape's running out or something. Oh, wow, it's just shot up in the air. Oh, wow. Well, I didn't get it on tape. I don't believe it. Next on TLC, see how science is safeguarding us against sinister bacteria and take a wild ride on an impossible roller coaster on how they do that. Then dinosaurs get rough on Paleo World.